I'm Ed Neuhauser. I live in Groton, New York on 130 acres, of which 75 is wooded. Um, I have a small sawmill, which I obtained in retirement, and I built a shop in a sawmill building to be able to use that wood and share it with my friends and relatives. So the first building, which is a heated enclosed building and well insulated, is 36 by 56 with a second story of attics trust storage. The second building that houses the sawmill is 30 by 56, but also has attic storage. That building is not heated and it's not insulated. This room in here that we're in right now is a 31 by 17 foot room. It's designed to be a, a shop that I can work on during the winter when things are really cold outside, when I don't like the soft frozen logs. So this is ductwork built into the floor. I designed this building with trenches in the concrete to allow a four inch pipe to be able to be in the floor. And then the supercell came along and kind of made that obsolete. And that was after I had put the design in for this building and poured this concrete. This room that you see in here also serves dual purpose as my wife's yoga studio. So I have to be able to clean it out every Monday evening. When the husband retired, the wife did not want the husband in the house. She said, go outside and go do something. So she still works and still pays for my toys. And I'm allowed to be in here during the day working on stuff, preparing wood. And then I'm allowed to come in for lunch and dinner. <laughs> of course, when you mill wood and saw it up, you really don't know where it's going, but there's lots of people that will trade all kinds of, particularly their time and their skills that I don't have in exchange for wood. And it makes for a lot of fun where people will come over. People will just come over and actually just ask to use the shop. So there's a lot of trading that goes on, which is kind of neat. It's fun to be able to interact with people that way. So I have a stand of five acres of red pine that was planted in 1927. And those woods are ready to harvest now. The walls on the main part of the shop and all the structure from this building is built by harvesting those logs. So those logs are harvested, cut into 22 foot and 33 foot lengths, brought here to the shop, cut down to 11 foot lengths, and then milled on my sawmill into one by threes, one by sixes, one by eights, two by fours, and two by sixes. So I've been harvesting a lot of that wood and sharing it with other people. There's also a lot of hardwoods, uh, particularly ash right now. We've harvested a lot of ash this year. Basically what you do is when you bring a log in, you actually buck that log into the 11 foot lengths, cut it into those lengths, then bring it with the tractor into the sawmill building, then take it up on the sawmill and you take four slabs off the log, four outer cuts on the log. Those slabs are set aside, that's with the bark on and actually given to people for heat. They use it to heat their house in the outdoor boiler. Then the log is cut down, you cut down what's called four quarter or one inch boards and we take those boards and we layer them up. But in order to allow those boards to dry, we cut what are called one by one stick and they're laid two feet apart on the board and the board is then laid up on those stickers and various layers up to 30 layers high. Pines dry relatively quickly in six to eight weeks they'll be fairly dry. For the hardwoods you got to figure for each inch of lumber it's one summer per inch to dry. In the old hay barn all the hardwood is stored in there and that's stickered and, and sits for a number of years before I use it. You always explore and, and analyze, and like for instance, in designing and building this shop, I went to four other guys and looked at their shops, and they, you know, gave me various hints and things to do. One guy told me a very uh, good thing to do, which I didn't have to do. He said, "Make your window height the same height as your table saw height, so you can take that board in one window and out the window, right all the way through." The through the building. So there was lots of tips by learning and talking to other people. I'm part of the New York Forest Owners Association and that's a group of people that gets together, talks about forest management, but they also talk about woodworking and there's many people in there that are much more skilled than I am. When you do something like this, you're always learning. You're always learning new things. You're always learning different ways of approaching things, how to move stuff around. It's all about having fun and learning new stuff and actually doing it with other people is a lot of fun too get a brand new sawmill and you've got this large expensive piece of equipment I actually spent three days sitting with the manual on my sawmill going over every page of that mill before I actually even turned it on because it's a big expensive and dangerous potentially dangerous piece of equipment but it's actually after I really spent a lot of time with it it's actually quite safe and pretty neat to use I think my favorite job hack is have an understanding and very tolerant wife because <laughs> really, she's really amazing, is very supportive of what I do. And if she wants a yoga studio, give it to her.